I have wanted to like acrylic paints for a long time. I've tried them before, but as someone coming from a background of digital art, and as someone who absolutely hates wasting paint, I have had a really hard time adjusting to acrylics for one reason and one reason alone, the drying time. They dry so fast on the canvas, I feel like I don't have enough time to blend the way I want to, and they dry so fast on the palette, I'm always worried about my paints drying up before I'm done with them or mixing the perfect color only to have it dry out and then having to attempt to mix it again. It's frustrating, I don't like it, and for years I have been avoiding painting with acrylics because of it. But Arden, you find yourself asking, if you hate acrylics so much, why are you forcing yourself to work with them? You're an adult, pick a different art supply. Well, my friend, normally I would. If I had all the time in the world to make these paintings, I would have chosen oils. Or if I didn't need them to be physical, tangible objects, I would have done them digitally. But these particular paintings that I'm doing here in this video were a very specific assignment and I had a very tight deadline. These paintings were Christmas presents. But Arden, you exclaim, it's February. I know. <laughs> Being the procrastinator that I am, I've been putting off finishing this video for over a month. But here we are, doing the darn thing. That was actually sort of my slogan for the process of these paintings, and I've been trying to adopt it as my motto for the year as well. We're doing the darn thing. Because I am a chronic perfectionist slash procrastinator, it takes me a long time to get around to doing things because I'm worried that I'm going to mess them up or do it wrong or ruin everything so nothing ever ends up getting done. Or when it does, it feels like the work is being slowly and painfully extracted out of me. Even if it's things that I really wanna do, it, it's really frustrating. <laughs> but in this case, I didn't have time to hem and haw over details or worry about messing things up because I had a deadline and several people who would hold me accountable to that deadline by being very disappointed if I missed it. And people being disappointed in me is even worse than me ruining an art piece. I had two days to make two paintings that needed to be both decently light fast and gift wrappable. It was time to face my nemesis. So this first painting you're watching me work on was a gift for my sister's boyfriend. I had heard he liked birds, particularly species commonly kept as pets. So I found a photo of a budgie on Pinterest that I liked and went to town. This whole process was basically me screaming and attacking the canvas with paint, trying to follow the reference as closely as possible. It's a decent technique and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I definitely have an easier time with realism when I'm painting animals than when I'm painting humans or humanoid creatures. So I think overall the, the budgie painting turned out pretty well. Um, I'm very happy with it. There were a few things, you know, if I were to do it over, I would redo certain things, certain techniques, you know, we always do. There's always room for improvement. For the second painting, I was feeling a bit more pressure for it to be really, really good because this one was for my mom. And you know, as much as I love my sister's boyfriend, he's a great guy. I don't know him as well, so he's not as important to me as my mom. So for this one, I started off by painting the whole canvas in a layer of magenta because I've seen other artists do that and I like the way it looks. And it just makes the whole painting feel a bit more cohesive and it gives the painting a bit more life and warmth because instead of the white of the canvas poking through any little gaps in the paint, there's a tiny sliver of magenta and it just, it gives a nicer effect. It makes, makes things look more finished. Uh, that was one of the problems that I had with the budgie painting. Um, there were little gaps of the white of the canvas and just with, with magenta instead of white, it makes it look more finished or any sort of underpainting that's not the white of the canvas. Just makes the whole thing look more finished. Uh, because I was worried about the magenta not being transparent enough and covering up the sketch, I did my sketch after my underlayer which in hindsight was a bad idea because I had to use charcoal pencil for my sketch to mark the layer of paint because a regular pencil wouldn't have worked on like the plasticky finish of dried acrylic paint. So because I used the charcoal pencil, some of that charcoal transferred into my paint when I was painting her skin and that made it look really muddy for a hot second until I could do a second layer. So even though it turned out all right in the end, I think next time I'm either going to sketch first and just try to make my underpainting layer more transparent, or I'll take the time to actually use a fix it up spray on my charcoal sketch. And just for this particular 
painting, I A, didn't have time, and B, was a little too lazy to go outside and spray it this time around. So of the acrylic paint that I have, um, most of the paints that I have are a set of one of those beginner sets of artist loft paints. Um, I think I got them for like $10. It was one of those like beginner try it out type of sets that had a whole bunch of basic colors. And then I have my nice golden acrylics that are much larger tubes, but I only have the primary colors plus white and black in those. I wanted to challenge myself for this painting to mostly use my golden paints because they are a much higher quality and also because I wanted to practice mixing colors from the primaries. That's something I've been trying to remind myself is that every time you paint, it's an opportunity to practice and get better and you're not gonna get any better if you never do the thing, so. Here we are, doing the thing. <laughs> this process was very similar to the budgie painting, a lot of screaming and attacking the canvas with paint. Uh, but for this one, I did allow myself a bit more creativity and freedom since I wasn't tied to a reference. Um, I'd like to think that at this point in my life, I have a decent idea of what a person looks like, but I did get a, a reference for the general shape of the pose and also a reference for the mushroom, but I wasn't following the references as closely as I did for the budgie painting. I also wanted to attempt a sort of bokeh lighting effect in the background, but it wasn't turning out the way that I wanted to, so I scrapped it and just went for a gradient. Um, I think you can see, I don't know where we are in the footage, but um, you could see my attempts at like the little circles of light in the background, and then I just paint over it. <laughs> I think in the end, the, the background turned out pretty well. And that is one thing that I want to work on this year is allowing myself to make bad art. Obviously for these, I couldn't let them be bad because they were gifts. But in the future, I need to let go of the idea that every painting I do and every drawing I do needs to be a perfect masterpiece because it won't be. That's an impossible standard to hold myself to. I'm by no means an expert painter and I think I still have a long way to go actually. And I need to remind myself that I'm not going to improve if I don't try. Nothing is going to get better if I don't let myself be bad first. So I'm hoping to document my process more, to show more failures, and in doing so to grow more. That's my main goal for this year actually, is growth. And I hope you can join me in my journey. By the end of this process, I found myself a little more comfortable with acrylic paints. It's still not my favorite medium, and I did end up with a lot of dry paint on my palette, and that's just something I need to let go of because I, there's no use hoarding all of these paints if I'm not going to use them, and some paint is going to get wasted in the process, and that's okay, and I still have a ton of paint left. That's fine. It's okay. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'm glad that I pushed myself like this. Question for the comments. What is your least favorite art supply, and would you try to make yourself like it? Also, if you like acrylic paint, what's your favorite thing about it? Comment down below, I would love to hear from you. Uh, at this point, if you've made it this far in the video, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more from me. I'm hoping to have a lot more soon and sooner than I have in the past. Well, I hope you enjoyed and that's the end. I'll see you next time. Bye.